Good day. Welcome. The 2018 May Geo Challenge of the Month was um, to do a cache and to write a log of 250 or more words. So, uh, last weekend I was out with a couple of my kids and my ex, and um, we decided to do a multi-cache and a few other caches in the area. Um, I decided to, about partway into it, I decided to... Um, start recording and um, get a whole bunch of videos and pictures and whatnot put together. And um, this is the compilation of that. So here is my entry for the May 2018 Geo Challenge of the Month. All right, so the cache that we decided to go after was called the Thomas Point Multi-Cache. It is a 2.5 difficulty, three terrain. Um, It is, the description says it is a three-part multi-cache in the Bunyan Preserve, Westport, Maine. Go to the first set of coordinates where you will find a second set that will lead you to the third set and the cache. The intent is to lead you along the walking trail to Thomas Point where you will find an ammo box. There is a bit of tree leaf cover at the first coordinate and at the cache that may cause interference. The hint should help spot the location if needed. Update. Uh, August 3rd, 2017, new cash box at final waypoint. Enjoy. Park at XX coordinates. Follow the path along the marked trail from the parking area. The Thomas Point Trail Blue is closed April 15th to August 15th, but you only need the Mill Pond Trail to reach all stages. There's no need to get muddy or wet. The trail is best if done at high tide, but lovely anytime. Bring lunch and enjoy the view at the point before hiking back to your car. During blueberry season, you can snack your way up to the final cache site. So I actually did not read the full description before I set out. Um, I think I read the first two sentences. And um, we were going after it. So um, this was the cache. Um, myself, Ray and Chick, and Winter Cheetah. Apparently Ray and Chick hasn't logged it yet. But myself, Winter Chick... Uh, Ray and Chicken with the Cheetah win. Um, and this is my log. It's a long story, some pictures, and a video to come. Let's just say my team did it the hard way. Stay tuned. That was my 498th find. And I added some links to um, the Discords and the Facebook group for main geocaching and the general global geocaching Discord server. So, feel free to check those out. All right, so, we got started here, and um, we headed out to the first coordinates, where we found the signpost with a indication of where the next coordinates were. So, we, um, we turned around, and based on which direction the GPS was pointing us, there was a, a little bit of a, there was one trail heading down to our right and one trail heading straight ahead. Um, this is the back of the sign. So there was one behind us and one heading down to the left looking at this sign like this. Um, the cache, the direction that the cache was pointing us on the GPS said to head behind us. There was a little walking bridge and a trail. So we said, okay, no big deal. Um, so from that point, we started heading down the trail and we got to a point where the coordinates and the trail didn't exactly line up, and um, it, it it was obvious at that point that it was going to get a little bit more difficult. Um, so this is where the trail is. You can kind of see my footprints going through the mud between the trees there. Um, and I was determined. I, I am one of those people that gets quite determined and... Um, So I decided to trek across the mud. And on the other side, there was a tree. And on that tree were the coordinates to the, the final stage. So I made note of the coordinates of my GPS and started to make the trek back. Through the mud and the muck. And then when I got back, um, 
we decided that um, based on the direction that the GPS was pointing us at that point, we would have had to head all of us across the mud and follow the trail from there. And I didn't did not want to drag um, the rest of my party, including my two-year-old and my six-year-old, through the mud um, to the other trail. And nobody had the appropriate shoes except for me and my mudding boots. So um, we looked at the map and we decided that if we went back to the car and we went up the road a little bit and down a little side road, that there was a land bridge that kind of went across the bay there that we could, you know, attempt to make our way across from there to find the cache. So we drove down to that point and we got some videos here. So let's start with the first video. I already walked through the mud, so let's um, brave the bridges. Because we're walking across this little bit of a land bridge to that point to get a cache. Let's see what we can get. I already walked across the mud, so my boots are a little muddy already. Should be fun. Interesting, different. Hell. This is going to be the tricky part. Hopefully I don't slip on the seaweed. Let's put the phone in my pocket. So at that point I put the phone in my pocket and um, I dug around and found some rocks and whatnot. And um, found a couple big rocks to throw in the water there. Which I did. Um, and then I crossed. And once I got to the other side, I was basically home free to get to the cache. So, I made some um, adjustments. Throw a couple of rocks in the water to make a little bit of a land bridge to get across. And here we go. Here goes nothing. Looks like the rest of it's pretty solid. There's a sign up there. Let's head to the cache. All right, so um, at that point, I switched over to my CGO application, um, recorded with um, Mo Mobzian, Mobizen. Uh, I got some black bars there to cover up the coordinates where I was at. Um, let's start playing that one. And once I get past the coordinate section, I can take those banners down, and you can watch the whole whole section there. Um, so let's play that one that I just traversed. The um, cache is 450 feet this way. Hmm. I'll have to adjust my settings for Mobzy in on this. Oh, and I haven't got it set up yet to put the little camera of me, but I'll add that later. I'll probably do an overlay for it with um, XSplit Broadcaster before I publish it. We should be good there. So I'll go back to map view here. This is a three-stage multi-cache. 
with this being the last stage that we're heading to, I'm using CGEO as my LG enabled geocaching application. And when they push releases and updates, I get tons of updates every day of them making progress with updating the application. It's pretty cool. All right, so I should be getting close to the cache here. All right, 50 feet. More details. Um, regular, Thomas Point multi-cache. Hidden 2008. There's some details about it. Top of the hill, under a tree that looks like a Y. I've got a couple of kids waiting in the car, so using the hints, speeds it up so they don't get too fuzzy. Heading up the hill here. Geocaching was uh, talking away from the device at this time, so it's kind of hard to hear me. You can watch me do the geocaching dance, bouncing all around where the coordinates are supposed to be. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I can find it. Let's go back to video. That tree kind of looks like a Y. Let's see here. Um, that looks suspicious. Hey, what do you know? We found an ammo can to boot. All right, let's take a look at it. And what do we got inside? All kinds of goodies. Crazy eights. Dinosaur memory. Old maid. Go fish. Golf ball. Ducky. Froggy. Whole bunch of stuffy. Alright, so thank you for watching. I'm going to sign the log here. And um, then I'll take a video of me trying to get back across the bridge. Alright, so um, here is the video of me attempting to get back across the ridge. So, the um, cache is all put back together. We're gonna head back across our bridge. Good 
All right, so let's head to the next video. There's two more videos, and then we're going to start typing up our um, our log. All right, here we are to our sign. That was our marker that we were close. I think this is a sign. There's our destination. Tough walking when you're a sore old man. All right, here we go. Very much a low tide adventure when you're doing it the hard way. When I get to the water, I'll take a little bit of video of where I got across, which is right over there. But then I'll have to put the phone in my pocket because it's a two-hand exercise getting across the water there. Both hands required. All right. Walking across seaweed's always slippery and scary. Please don't slip and fall. It'd be very unpleasant. All right. So those are the rocks that I threw in to get across. I gotta climb up that seaweed wall, both hands, and I'll be home free. So phone goes in the pocket. Here we go. And across I did get, and I didn't even get wet. Well, except for a little bit on my boots that were, since the rocks were, were in the water a couple inches below the surface. And the last video before we start typing up our log. There. Now we're pretty much home free. A little bit of a rickety homemade bridge there to go across. On a relatively unstable wall. But we made it. Thank you for watching. Tune in for the next exciting adventure. Don't leave yet. So now it's time for us to type up our... Type up our adventure. Um, that's Westport Island, right?
Yes, Westport Island. Woo! The hard way, up to 56 words already, doesn't take very long. So this is where things went this is where things started to turn poorly.
All right, so 356 words. That I hate little red underlines. Why has this got an underline on it? Eh, hyphenated, sure. All right, so let's highlight all this. Alrighty, so let's head back to our log here. Let's edit our log. Alrighty, so I don't think that you can see what I'm doing at the moment, but we're going to submit an update to our log here. Alright, so if we refresh the page, you can now see our updated log. You can see our TBA, where I will put in a link to this video. Um, so that is our 354 word log, not including the you can find a video of our adventure and my signature at the bottom. Um, this concludes my entry for the May 2018 uh, Geo Challenge of the Month. I look forward to seeing what June offers us. Um, thank you for watching.